tonight to be able to be back in your house. It's a good thing to be back with the family of God. I thank you, Lord, for all they have done, all they will continue to do. Tonight, we come to you, God, with open arms and with a heart that is hungry for the Word of God. And we pray that as we begin to sing songs, that our spirits will be lifted, and that, God, by the time we get through singing, we'll be so hungry we're starving, and that Richard will bring forth a word that will fill us until we're overflowing. Thank you for your wonderful blessings and your goodness, and, God, we tell you together, we sure do love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Just in case some of you have forgotten, I would like for y'all to welcome Woody Adams over here on the drums. If you haven't met Woody and his family, I invite you to do that. This is his lovely wife, Angela, and grandson, granddaughter Madison went somewhere, but she's here. So yeah, if you haven't met them yet, please make them feel welcome, okay? All right. I will bless thee, O Lord. <clears throat>
have victory in Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> I mean, have the victory in Jesus tonight. Praise the Lord. Do you have the victory in Jesus? Stay there, just kind of wave your hand. Praise God. Our Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you that you have brought our pastor and family home. And God, I pray that you would bless and continue to strengthen thee and those, those in the family. And that God, that you would bless my sister. Lord, you have the power. And oh God, you have the will. And Father, we ask you right now for your mercy and grace to be extended. And Father, I pray that, Master, that you would be in this service tonight. Give us of your word. Give us of your spirit. Lord, let the Holy Spirit of God come down. 
and touch each heart. And Lord, give us encouragement and, oh Lord, direction. And Father, we'll bless you, oh God, for we know that you are worthy. And Lord, your name is to be praised. And Lord, it lives in praise in our heart. And God, I ask you right now, Lord, continue this service in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you, God is truly a wonderful God. Amen. And He knows His people and He loves His people. I, I, I just, I, I marvel sometimes at that uh, part where that Jesus said, you know, He's the shepherd. And you know his voice. You're his sheep. He knows you. And if one goes astray, he leaves the 90 and 9 and goes find that one. That's a, that is really a mystery to me. And it's the mystery of the grace of God. Amen. Unspoken, unmerited grace of God. I was thinking about tonight's service, and a while back, I heard a man speaking a little bit about a particular subject matter that we might get into a little bit tonight. I'm not, this is Wednesday night. We don't take over an hour, hour and a half. That's usually about all, and uh, we can usually get most of it in by then. And then we can we can go to Dairy Queen or something. But uh, I'd have to float alone. Anybody? But uh, oh, thank the Lord! Heaven came down and glory just filled this place. I'm telling you, you can't beat that. I got oh, I was here. <laughs> yes. But in that, we were talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, you know, how the Paul was talking about that gospel, which is only one gospel. Amen. There is no gospel to the Gentile, gospel to the Jew. There is but one. And I, I thank God that that is the case. We don't have to search and wander. We don't have to guess. And I tell you, there are confusing voices out there. And there are some silver tongues that will tell you anything. And if you're willing, they'll lead you astray. Amen. Paul talked to the early church, making statement after statement to the effect of you started well, who did hinder you? What happened? What happened to you? And over in Revelation, the book of Revelation, the Bible talks in the third chapter about one of the churches there in Revelation. And he begins by saying, under the church, or under the angel of the church of Sardis. Now, let me, let me tell you, uh, if I talk like Theobert the cat tonight, it's because I bit my tongue. So, y'all just look at it and go, hey, Sylvester, go ahead. But anyhow, but unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. I want to pray. Father, I thank you for this word. Father, I thank you for the spirit of God, Lord, that I can feel in this house tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts, O oh Lord, to receive what you would have us. And God, I ask you right now, give us of your anointing, give us of your peace, give us of your strength. And Father, we'll bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I love the way that in these cases where that no matter what the circumstance, that when Jesus would tell somebody that he had a problem with them, he always come back and he always talked about some of the good they did. I told you I had an overseer one time that uh, I don't care what somebody did. They could get up and talk for 20 minutes and never say nothing right, but somewhere he would find something good to say. I can't believe they were able to do that for 20 minutes, if nothing else. And I, I, I marvel at that, and I look at that, and, and I try to pattern my own self after that. It's a hard thing. Sometimes it's a little uh, easier to uh, complain about something than it is to talk about the good of it. And I, that is really a mystery to me. I don't understand that. I'd rather be talking about something good going on, you know. Yeah. Ask me how I'm doing. It's so good I can't hardly stand it. That's, hey, that's the way I live. And people stand back and go, well, how do you always up? Because I, I make myself be up. Amen. Do you don't have any hurts and pains? Oh, yes, I have hurts and pains. I have aches all over. Sometimes I don't feel like I should have got up, much less able to get up. And, uh, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes I, I get up there anyhow, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to do all that I can, and I'm going to be up about it. I'm going to be happy about it. Because that's the way God uh, wants his children to be. Not down in the mother grubs, not sad, not down all the time, boo-hooing and woo-wooing and carrying on. He wants you to be happy. Amen. Amen. In, inside of here you find where they're always talking about rejoicing. They're always talking about joy. They're always talking about be glad. You know, there's a lot of things that you can be sad about in the world, but there's a lot of things that you can look around and be happy about. Amen. Thank God nothing else. Brother Ricky, I got up this morning. I struggled, but I got up. Sometimes I have to make two or three jabs at it, but I can get out of it after a while. Here, Jesus is talking to the church. And he's telling them, you know, you know, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, that thou livest, and are dead. In other words, what they're saying to them is, you think you're all right, but you're dead. You're like a whited sepulcher. You're white on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. Everything looks good, and you're going good, but things are not right. Now, I, I thought about that, and I, I, I said, you know, back over in Ephesians, there, the second chapter, Paul said, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And then listen. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. One time you were there, but God through his mercy and grace has brought you into his marvelous life. But now what Jesus is saying, you live, you think you're all right, you think you're living, you think everything's going okay, but you're dead. You've gone back. What happened? What happened? And I talked the, the other uh, day, Sunday, about, you know, we get caught up in political correctness. Now, if you think that political correctness is a new phom phenomenon, read the Word of God. It starts back in the garden, and it winds up all the way to the end. Everybody has a word. Everybody has an idea. What is political correctness? If you agree with me, you're right. If you don't, you're wrong. I mean, that's it. I mean, 
You can be called every name in the book. I told you, I've been called a deplorable before. I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> had to look it up. Had a good idea. But here Jesus is talking to the early church. You think everything's okay. You think you're all right. But there's a problem. In one case in one of the churches, he said, I have someone against you. Now, now a few more verses down there, he talks about all the good things that they were doing and those that were doing good. We might get to that. But here, he's talking about, you've got a problem. You have done one thing or said one thing and you've done another. Is about basically what it is. See, today, do you know that in this country, Land of the free, the home of the brave. You can take that and put it on the shelf. Do you know that in some parts of this country, if you got out there in your yard and waved an American flag, they'd come to you? You know why? We can't post an American flag in some places. Why? Because somebody might come by and it may offend them. Now, if I'm in the middle of the desert in Saudi Arabia and I rip out old glory and I start waving it around and one of them people come over there to me and say, hey, I, I, you know, that's kind of offensive. You don't need to be doing it. I'd say, let me roll this little thing up right and put it back in my pocket because this is where you live. I happen to live here. There are people that in San Francisco, they have cathedrals that will seat 500 people and more. Do you know that only one person at a time by law is allowed to go into that house? One person. One. You might catch COVID. One person. Do you know that in most places in this country, we have a lot of our schools here that are adhered to it. You have to be careful about it. They can't have prayer. They can't talk about the things of God. They can't talk about what's right and what's wrong. What in the world's going on? You know who's to blame for all of that? The Democrats. The Republicans. The President. I know. It was amazing to me. Before Bush got there, Bush did it. You know, I remember that. I think he ran back to Texas and hid out there in his ranch. They hadn't seen him since. But what, what happened? We allowed it. Do you know that 60 million babies, not in the world, I didn't say 60, I didn't say 60,000. I said 60 million babies have been brutally murdered in the most heinous way imaginable in this country. And now they want you and I to pay for it. You know whose fault that is? Why? You can't say anything about that. That's not politically correct. Tell me it's not. They'll come in one day and snatch me out of a pulpit and throw me in the bottom of the deepest jail. But that'll be all right. I'll be down there with Paul and Silas, and we'll be singing the hymns of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I know it won't be long. I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 60 million souls. Do you know why that they want to open the bottom border and just let everybody, whomsoever will, whatever it is, to flood in? We've lost 60 million American citizens. 60 million. That's one-fifth of our population. 20%. 
We don't have the workforce. We have businesses in Waycross that can't run a third shift because there's nobody to work. So what's happening? We're paying for the consequences of our slackness. We're living a life and saying I'm alive, but we're actually dead. And every time we allow these kind of things to go on, we're losing. We're going backwards. We're not advancing. And we may think we are. Let's just compromise. Let's just get along. That's what we need to do. And I told you the other day, get you a Bible to start reading it. You need to know the Word of God. You need to have that built. That is your foundation. Outside of that, you don't have one. That is your foundation. That's the Word of God. And let me tell you, if you're having a problem, pray. The spirit of discernment will come upon you and God will reveal His Word and His way unto you. You don't have to walk in darkness. You are a child of light. He is the light of the world, praise God. You don't have to live in that darkness. Amen. That felt good anyhow. Praise God. We can live a life that is free in Jesus Christ. We don't have to live in that way. We don't have to live bound up. But we can have peace in our soul. I don't know if Brother, Bray, uh, Brother Ed remembers this or not. <clears throat> but we used to have, and I, I, you probably do. Some of you in here probably remember the old services we used to have called breaking bread. Remember that, Brother Ed? Never heard. Didn't even know they had bread. What was that? But anyway, it was we had bread breaking service. And what they'd do is they'd come out there and get a loaf of light bread or a biscuit or whatever they could find, and they'd give you a piece of it. And what you'd do is you'd walk over, and everybody, it, sometimes you'd have a good prayer, and sometimes it'd take a little while, but people would start walking around the church, and you'd go over there, and you'd find somebody that you'd had a problem with. And you'd give them a little piece of bread, and they'd give you a little piece of their bread, and y'all would eat it. And what you'd do is you would talk about it. The Bible says confess your faults. Your faults. Not how good you are. Confess your faults one to another. We have a problem with that. I ain't telling that bunch of heathens nothing. Now granted, there are some that if you told it would be on the above the fold at the Waycross Journal Herald tomorrow morning. <laughs> Next Wednesday. <laughs> now it's once a week. But anyway... So you have to be, well, there's such things using wisdom, <laughs> common sense. <laughs> and, uh, but you would go there and you would talk to them. And you would talk about those things that were the problem. You know, I never saw a fist fight in one of those. I saw a lot of tears. I saw a lot of people making reconciliation. I saw a lot of people talking to their friend or to their brother or sister or they were talking to God. And I saw a revel revelation of, of Christ coming down and speaking into their life. It's called breaking bread. Praise God. That's what the early church used to do. They went and broke bread together. Amen. There's no such thing as not having a brother and sister in the Lord that you should be able to go to. And there are people in, in here that have problems. One with another. Now listen. After the service, I don't expect to see eight or ten loaves of bread out and a bunch of people running up at me. <laughs> but if that's what it takes, Brother Ed, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Amen. 
But we have to have some kind of continuity inside of the church to where that we can love one another. That love has to prevail over everything else. And when that love prevails over everything else, we don't get caught up in the things of the world and the rudiments of the world and get carried away with every wind of doctrine that comes down the pike. But we are solid in the Christ, in the Christ that we believe in. Amen. That gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I don't... Uh, I know that when I, I got saved, I can only use myself. I can't talk about you. I can talk about me. I talk about you enough, so every now and then I talk about me. But I remember getting saved. Well, there was one thing about getting saved. When I got saved, I didn't just go down there and get saved going about my merry way or my uh, little business. You know, everybody's got their little business they got to take care of, and sometimes it's most everybody else's too. But I didn't. I just, I just got in there taking care of myself. And I knew that I had to have more than just that one experience than in that altar. I had to get a hold of something. And Brother Danny, I don't know if you heard me talking about the second work of grace, which is sanctification. And when God lays that on your heart, you will preach that. Amen. Not before, but when He does. That's not my job, y'all. I do this. But we have, a, we have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ that has to be built. It has to grow. It has to have uh, some kind of, you got, you got to just get in there and if nothing else, you got to dig around it. You know, sometimes we used to go around there and granddaddy had, where my house is at now, that was the garden, about an acre and a half of garden, big old garden. And when things weren't doing just right, we had to go hoe the garden. It didn't matter if it was 900 degrees. Go hoe the garden. But when we dig around, and we didn't cut granddaddy's pea vines, <laughs> it's kind of hard to hide that because after a while they'll turn brown. <laughs> Whose row was this? I didn't know nothing. <laughs> but we'd dig around there, and when we'd dig around like that, things would start changing. Things would act like they wanted to grow. That's the same thing with your faith, your relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to stir the ground sometimes. Amen. We'd bend the peas over, and granddad take the mule and run down through there with the uh, sweeper and we'll, we'll, Lay that, lay that by, and granddaddy would run me out of the field every now and then because I'd been in them too far. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> but they'll lay them by, and, that, and let me tell you, those things that take off, you'd think just everything. No, you couldn't tell what was happening to man. It'd just it'd be exciting. And then we got to go out there and pick them. But anyway, the same thing with your relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to build that. I was not satisfied just to go down there and have me that prayer that night. I knew God saved me. I didn't have a doubt in my mind. No way. They couldn't have come up there with an army of 10,000 and tried to convince me, Sister Carolyn, that I hadn't found peace in Jesus Christ. No way that that blood of Jesus Christ had washed me clean. I knew it without a shadow of a doubt. And the one thing about it, Sister Gwen, I didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to let it go. I didn't want to have to go through that again, but I didn't want to let it go. I wanted to keep what I had. And you know what I did? I got my little Bible out. And I started reading. And I read and I read and I read and I read. I remember when I got 
down to Florida, and we were still going through the churches there. And then I became the associate minister there. Wonderful man of God, A.H. Davis, brought me out there and put me in. And I preached every Sunday night. But Brother Ed, I didn't stop reading. I kept reading. I kept reading. And I kept reading. And then I moved from out of Sanford. I worked for the city of Sanford. I went out and worked for the city of Castleberry. Then we moved all over everywhere. Next thing you know, I was called into the ministry. And I know I was called into the ministry. And nobody had to tell me. Nobody had to show me. Nobody had to draw a book and tell me that this is the book. You learn from here. No, I learned from God. And when I got there, I, I was able to pastor churches, minister to people, save souls through the blood of Jesus Christ because I introduced Him to them. Not me, Him. Praise God. And because of that, I was able to continue on and on and on. But let me tell you what. I never lost that Bible. I worked at Herb White Marine down in Jacksonville in the service department. It come around lunchtime. It's lunchtime. Great. I'd get up on the bench. Darcy'd have me some kind of sandwich. I'd sit down on that bench, open the drawer of my toolbox, reach in there, pull my little Bible out, and I'd start reading. And I read for the lunch hour. Every time I was stopped, I was reading the Word of God. I was talking to God. I was finding out what God had to say because I did not want to go back. I did not want to lose what I had. I wanted to continue. I wanted to grow in Christ. I didn't want to be one of those that Paul was talking about. I marvel at how you just fall back. You started well. Who did hinder you? I don't want nobody hindering me. I don't want a devil in my life. I don't want nothing to hinder me from the grace of Jesus Christ. I want to grow in that every single day. And that's where I live. Praise God. Amen. I told you I have problems. My problems stem from that one-eyed devil. And let me tell you, Doris will come in and who are you talking to? I said, I'm arguing with that man on TV. <laughs> we can have a good one every now. I think he hears me. But then I'll get in there and I'll get to arguing pretty bad. And I'll say, you know, you ain't got the sense enough. To, I, I, and let me tell you what's happened. Let me tell you what's happened. Used to, I'd get all that out. And I finally, I caught myself. And I said, God, I don't need to do this. I want you to correct me, remember? I told you. I want you to correct me on this. Every time I do this, every time I start, I want you to stop me. He does. He does. Why? Because he cares about me. Not because how good I am, because he cares about me. He died for me for crying out loud. You don't think he's going to try to take care of me? And I sit there and I go, and now I've got to where I get down to, e -e 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 -e, and that's about it. <laughs> don't even get a good uh, uh, out of it, nothing. <laughs> just, just about that. That's about the ball game. And I'll say, Lord, I want to thank you that you stopped me. And then I have a prayer. And I ask him to forgive me. Why? Brother Ed, it wasn't just what was on my lips. It wasn't what was just on my tongue. It's coming out of my heart. I want it moved out of here. I get it moved out of here. I don't have to worry about the rest of it. And that's the same thing with your life. You can't get it out of here. It never will end. It'll just progressively get worse and worse. And I've got now where I 
pretty well catch it before it starts, and I'll still pray. Why? Because it's still down in my heart. I ain't said it. Didn't even start to say it. But it's still down in my heart. I'm going to move that through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's going to be gone. Amen. And I'm going to be a happy man. You won't know about it. Probably won't tell you a mumbling word about it. But we have to come together sometimes and confess our faults one to another. Speak one to another. Speak liberty. Praise God. I like to come around people that are talking about the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Amen. That's the kind of conversation I like. I don't care about what Joe Blow did over yonder or Susie Q did. I could care less. I don't care. You come to me, well, old brother so-and-so said such and such about you. What did Paul say? Hmm, bother me a bit. I didn't give them one hour. I didn't give them no time at all. I backed off of it and said, I'm not going to be a part of that. Amen. And I'm not going to be. Well, Brother Clark, you just deny. No, I'm not. I'm the nine place for the devil. That's it. I'm not going to give him place in my life. This is what the church at Sardis was doing. They were going in there, and Jesus said, Thou hast a name that thou livest, but you're dead. You say everything's all right. But you're dead. He said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. In other words, just like I was talking about, somewhere down the line you have to say, God, check me. Check me. See what kind of heart I have living in here, Lord. See what it is. Check me. And make sure everything's all right. For remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast. And here's one of my words that we forget so easily. And repent. And repent. Lord, I want to live for you. And I'm going to live for you from now on the rest of my days. And if you'll just save me, then Lord, I'll do so and so and so. You want me to tell you where that prayer is going? Just about right here. Ceiling. He ain't never seen the ceiling. He gets about right here, side of your mouth. Why? Because Jesus is waiting on one thing. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. That's what he's looking for. And that's the only answer. You have to repent. And here he said, repent. If therefore thou, thou, and hold fast, therefore if, therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and, will, and sh thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. One of these days, somebody's going to give me enough money to buy me some glasses. <laughs> but listen to this. Now listen to what Jesus said. I love this part. Now over here he's talking about you're falling away. You think you're alive, but you're dead. But then he says, and turn around. And, and you know, I, I used to, we used to hear the, the saying, everybody's doing it, or everybody does it. No, they don't. No, they don't. Just the people you were hanging around with do. But the rest of the crowd don't. And what you find out most of the time is that crowd that don't is bigger than the crowd you've been hanging with. Amen. They just look small in your sight. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, 
and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now listen. There are those around you that have never soiled their garments. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. There are those around you that have never fallen away. There are those around you that are solid as a rock. I used to see people, I'd say, well, I don't know nothing about them. I don't, I don't know nothing about them. And, and I, you know, they go to church and I see them and I don't know nothing about them. And then later on, something would happen. And I'd find out who the rocks were. Who the rocks were. And they'd all of a sudden surface. And I'd stand back and say, wow. That's a rock of the church. Our desire in Christ should be, Lord, make me a rock of the church. Amen. Make it where that if somebody has a need or a problem, they can come to me and bring that. They can bring it to me. And we can talk about it. We can break bread together. We can talk about the things that God has for every one of us. Lord, make me a rock. Don't make me one that is ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, don't let me be one that will take a back seat to the sin that is running rampant through and fro and through and everywhere else, to and fro throughout the earth. Lord, let me be a rock. Plant me on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Build upon me. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Lord, that we have your blessing and, God, we have your spirit. Lord, I thank you that in all things, Lord, we glorify you. And praise God, I hope tonight that, Lord, that you have received glory and honor from your children. Father, be with us now, O oh God. Be with our pastor and his family. These that are around us with our sick in body. Lord, be with them, O oh God. Sister Maria, all these others. And Lord, strengthen them, O oh God, for this week ahead. And bring us back again at the appointed time that we might worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.